Good morning. Welcome back to another edition of Gary's Movie Aporium. Sorry it's been a few days, guys. Uh, we've been having kind of eh, semi-bad storms. Uh, just got unburied and find out this morning we're going to be getting six or seven more inches, if not more. Our weatherman never gets it right, <laughs> especially when it comes to lake effect snow. But uh, let's get started on what I got this morning. Right off the top here. First up is a Tom and Jerry Once Upon a Tomcat. Once Upon a Tomcat here. Warner Brothers, uh, 73 minutes on this one. Has one, two, three, seven or eight uh, episodes on here. Comes available in English, Fr French, and Spanish. English uh, subtitles. Um, now I don't know if this is like a best of Tom and Jerry as opposed to like a feature film kind of thing but that's what it looks like a bunch of episodes there's a look at the back you know what you're getting with Tom and Jerry and then the next up I got a movie uh, starring Joe Blunt and uh, Rodney Perry Once Upon a Time in Detroit how far would you go to protect your family From Maverick Entertainment. They have a website as well. Clocks in at 104 minutes. It does have interactive menus, trailers, uh, and a scene selection. Uh, it comes with it comes in digital surround sound. It doesn't have which uh, you know whether it's 2.0 or 5.0, but well, I'm assuming 5.1. Um, Technicolor and it clocks in at 104 minutes on this. Let's look at the back. Don't know much about that one. <clears throat> I haven't seen that one much around. I'm very happy to get another one of these uh, Dragnets 5 DVD set starring Jack Webb. My name is Friday. I'm a cop. Five disc in this, guys, if you're lucky enough to find it. I believe this is an extra. I believe I did show this in a previous video. Uh, it says it aired from 52 to 58. 11 hours of running time on this with a uh, full screen, black and white, 2.0 surround or uh, sound. It does have 25 episodes on this as well, in case you were wondering how many episodes it has. Let's look at the back. I believe that's an extra, like I say. i more than 80% sure it was. Um, and then I got a movie starring Michael Higginbottom, Jessica Reed. I think Michael Higginbottom is actually HBK. Uh, Tom Patera and The Miseducation of Joy. Yeah, I want to say... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Michael Higginbottom is actually HBK. I think that's his real name. Because I remember a skit in wrestling where uh, it was Impact Wrestling and one half of the um, faction of DX, uh, Road Dog, uh, was talking about their real name in a segment during Impact. And he said Michael Higginbottom. So I'm assuming they took the name Shawn Michaels. They used... Michael as his last name and I don't I'm pretty sure Higginbottom is his real name uh, Last name everyone has the right to believe and it would make sense too because he's born again Christian and this this movie here is to do with a uh, God so a little interesting back backstory on that uh, It's not rated at least according to that um, 100 minutes 185 by 1 widescreen presentation. Um, Joy Hunter is a modern miracle who survived a disease that should have ended her life. Now 17, she heads off to college and enrolls in, in the class of Professor Jim Burns, a man who lost his faith after a family tragedy and now espouses atheistic principles. So. Basically, uh, lost his 
lost faith after a family tragedy, which is very understandable. I would too, probably. I'm not real religious, but but I would understand it if somebody didn't want to believe they, you know, lost their family. Very understandable. Uh, I got a movie here starring Johnny Depp, Joel Ed Edgerton, Benedict Cumberpatch, Kevin Bacon, Jesse Plemons, Peter Skarsgård, Dakota Johnson, and Corey Stahl. It's called Black Mass. Johnny Depp gives a tour to Forrest performance as White, Whitey Bulger, uh, says Rolling Stone. Hard to believe that's uh, Johnny Depp right there, huh? It's rated R. 122 minutes on this one. Uh, it says uh, Depp vanishes into the, his role. He's genuine, genu genuinely scary. Special feature Johnny Depp becoming Whitey Bulger. So I'm assuming they probably put this like hair piece on his head that makes him look like he's going bald and I don't know it's just it says languages and subtitles English French and Spanish it does have mo uh, bonus material the trailer may not be subtitled it's rated R it says it's from uh, Cross Creek Pictures along with Rat Pack Rat Pack Dune Entertainment and I think that's all and free. It has a bunch of them. Lay Grisby Productions, Free Free State Pictures, and Head Headgear Films. I mean, they're calling it a Scott Cooper film, so it's Black Mass. I think he plays like a mob hit leader, you know, mob leader here. Pretty famous uh, mob boss. If I remember right, but I don't really know much about, you know, I don't really follow mob movies all that much, but I do remember that getting a lot of praise when it came out. And next up, I got Peter Pan. Um, well, it says it's the new adventures of Peter Pan. I think it says either DQ Entertainment or BQ Entertainment. Very uh, friendship, a very, very exciting adventure. And it has this, like, Kind of like sandpaper feel to it right here. Guess that's supposed to be her wings. Yeah, I guess that's what they're going for there. Yeah, and that's got like this bubbling like right here. I don't know if you can see that too well. Yeah, see it a little bit there. If you could pick that her wings up too good or not. Yeah. If you can see it, yeah, a little harder to pick that up, but. You were able to see the crystallization going on by her arms. I guess it's trying to say she's magic because she's magic, you know. She kind of has these uh, mystical uh, fairy dust or whatever. But uh, 85 minutes, and it does have the same fairy dust kind of stuff going on on the back here, like in each corner and around her wings again. That's pretty neat. Um, 5.1 Dolby Digital, 16 by 9, uh, 1, 1 by 78. For Momentum Pictures, and it was DQ Entertainment as well. Uh, let's see, try to find a year in this one. I don't know, I'm not, not seeing a year at all. Oh, 2016. It was right in the middle and kind of blended in. Uh, get ready for a fairy, fairy special adventure in Neverland. And Captain Hook captures Peter, Tinkerbell, the Lost Kids, Wendy, John, and Michael. They must fly head on into danger to save their friends. And this comes complete with a slip, too. That is going to come out okay. It's right there. Same exact look. Uh, and then next, ooh, got a runner. <laughs> I don't know how it come loose, but it wasn't loose when I got it. I hate that. <laughs> and I know I'm not rough with movies either, so I, I don't know what why these come loose all the time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to buff buff that out a little bit. 
I'll have to put this aside and buff it out at some point. Uh, when the bow breaks, it does come complete with a digital code if anybody's interested. Uh, you can leave your comments in the comment on it below. But it's uh, when the bow breaks, and hopefully it's playable because I feel like it just if it's not, your dollar just goes right into the fire, you know. Uh, I mean, it's only a dollar, but still, you know, could have went for something else maybe. Morris Chestnut, Regina Hall, Jazz Sinclair, edge of your seat until the very end, says Chastity Saunders of the Nocturnal. Oh, it's PG-13 on this one. This was a French-Canadian release. Um, I'm trying to see what year it is for you. I think this is 2016 from Screen Gems from Sony. It has nine... Nine deleted and extended scenes, commentary with director John Cassar, uh, writer Jack Olson and actress Jazz Sinclair, and the have and have nots uh, little uh, featurette on this. But like I said, it's PG-13. I'm not, I don't know if I said the running time or not. Let's see. Oh, 107 minutes. And it's uh, anamorphic uh, widescreen, 2 two by 39 by 1. Let's look at the back. And next up, uh, starring Fam I think it's pronounced Famke Jansen. And James, the late, great James Galdolfini, Down the Shore. Uh, James Galdolfini. Galdolfini's most substantial role, role to date so is Variety, which I don't know about that. He get a lot of, you know, got a lot of praise for The Sopranos. Uh, he is pretty darn good in uh, Eight Millimeter with uh, Nicolas Cage as well. I think I think that movie role he gets overlooked quite a bit into. Uh, VVS Films, 94 minutes, 5.1, 16 by 9 widescreen. A 178 by 1. It does have English and French subtitles. Uh, it's considered a drama. A little long in the tooth on reading. Uh, but basically it stars uh, James Galdafini as a man named Bailey. He's the owner-operator of a rundown amusement park. Uh, apparently a mysterious stranger occur uh, appears carrying the ash uh, ashes of Bailey's sister. And claiming to be and claiming to be her husband dark secrets are unearthed and I guess we go from there I don't know it kind of sounds thriller a little bit as well not just dramatic but pretty happy to have that I got it mostly because it did have those two actors in it and then I got the trop well, this is a spellbinding, lyrical, the most moving documentary in seven years. This is a beautiful film. A uh, number of Sun Sundance Independent and Silver Box festivals here got selected for and won. This is part of the Docurama Films line that's out there. 90 minutes on this one. Well, over 90 minutes. It's actually 91, but... I don't, I don't know if they meant an additional 90 minutes of extras and ex extended scenes. Um, since the story has encapsulated the iconic narrative of, of America over the last century, the great migration of African Americans escaping Jim Crow, the rise of manufacturing in the, mid, in the middle class, the love affair with automobiles, the flowering of the American dream, and the collapse of the economy, and the fading American mythos. So I don't know if this is just, you know, you know life in Detroit. That, it, you know, it's rise and fall, like a lot of things that, I guess it's kind of hit hard times. I don't know if it's still that way, but... I do know they had problems with, uh, somewhere in Michigan was having problems with, uh, drinkable water and 
and things like that, like uh, pollution and, and all kinds of, they really fell on hard times where they didn't really have the money to keep, you know, keep it up to par and, but pretty happy you get that. And next up, I got a Lego Nexo Knight Season 1. And I had to open this one. Because we thought it was a runner. And it was turned out it was a two-disc. There. Give you a better look at that. Uh, 221 minutes on this one. So you're... You're getting a lot of bang for your buck on this one. Two discer, like I said. Disc one has five episodes, and disc two has five episodes. Um, let's see, I'm trying to see what the year. Oh, uh, I think it says 2016. This one was. Let's look at the back. Pretty happy to get these Lego these. These Legos, the DC Universe, and so on. Uh, there's a pretty good uh, Lego one that's out too. Is uh, Clutch Powers, I think. I think it's called Clutch Powers. That's a good one if you can get your hands on that. I don't think it's at the Dollar Tree, but if you want to, you know, get it to add to your Lego collection, um, I'd recommend it for that. Uh, movie starring Ashley Bratcher, David Lee Smith, Jason London, and Stephen Baldwin, featuring the, the star of Unplanned, A Walk with Grace. We may, uh, wander, but Grace begins us, br brings us home. So, uh, and this is obviously a Vivo with the look on the back there with the four window thing. I know I imply that in every video, but I just like to let people know that it, you kind of can tell it's a Vivo by that kind of look. A uh, bit repetitive, I guess, at this point, but uh, it's a widescreen uh, presentation. It's a faith film, so just be forewarned if it's not up your alley and you're not really into the Christianity kind of stuff. I mean, I kind of am to a point, but... Some of it's a little too sappy for my liking, but uh, 101 minutes on this one. A modern day retelling of the pro prodig prodigal, prodigal son. A walk with Grace follows a widowed L.A. businessman, Nate Lassiter, after his mother passes the week before Easter. And then apparently Nate returns to his hometown in Ohio to sign away his family's factory. So... Not, not too, uh, wouldn't want to be him to have to sign away the family's factory just for the sake of an almighty dollar. Should have a little bit of pride in a family owned business. I mean, I know if you don't have the expertise, that's understandable, but it'd be hard for me to sell my family's business. I'd try to make a go of it. If I couldn't do it, I'd, you know, do what he's going to do, sell it. Uh, Ice Cube. Mike Epps, Chris Tucker, and Charlie Sheen, and it's a double feature. First movie being all about the Benjamins and Money Talks. I think I made the mistake and got this, and I'm pretty sure Larry and Melissa sent me this, and I didn't know about it till I, after I got it home. Uh, both features are, I want to say rated R. Uh, from New Line Cinema, both, yeah, both features are rated R. They're uh, both uh, labeled as uh, New Line Cinema. Um, yeah, they're they're copyrighted by New Line Cinema and, and Warner Brothers on this. So, sixteen by nine on both. Uh, let's see, I think all about the Benjamins is two by four by one, and. Uh, Money Talks is um, 2 by 35 by 1. And uh, they both come, uh, well, the second one, be, um, Money Talks uh, does come with subtitles, whereas uh, All About the Benjamins doesn't. I remember a little bit about Money Talks when it came out, but I don't really remember much about All About the Benjamins. Let's look at the back. 
And then uh, I got this. I know Larry and Melissa said something about getting this. And I don't know if they still want it or not or if they have it. But uh, it's a superstar collection. It's uh, Zack Ryder. Or uh, his real name is Matt Car Cardona. For you, for you uh, AEW fans and Impact fans that... He just showed up on Impact at the last pay-per-view. Uh, his real name's Matt, Car Mar Matt Cardona. Uh, has Zack Ryder versus Christian. Uh, he has a, a match where Hugh Jackman actually was in his corner against Vicky Guerrero. Uh, when she was paired with Dolph Ziggler. Zack Ryder and John Cena versus The Miz and R-Truth. Uh, Zack Ryder versus John Cena. Uh, Zack Ryder and Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler and Wade Barrett, and Zack Ryder versus Dolph Ziggler for the United States Championship. So, there's a number of things on here, a number of matches. I'm trying to see how long it is. And I'm not seeing a length. Only thing I'm seeing is it says disc, disc made in Mexico. <laughs> That's all I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm not seeing a length on this. It's probably it's probably PG-ish though, because because WWE is uh, kind of a more uh, kid-friendly wrestling promotion. So, happy to have that. Then next up, Parker Stevenson, the Confederate. It's a Synodyme title, IT and distribution. Uh, so this is 2017 slash 2018, but it does have the Synodyme title. It's 2018, so we'll go with that. Um, 106 minutes on this one. Uh, language English, widescreen pre presented in a letterbox widescreen format. Basically, it preserves the originals release so um trying to, trying to see who's in it justice parker stevenson well it does say heather clark and david long and trip courtney with Br christopher bowman james holmes jerry chesser and charles kaiser so uh, and the film was directed by Christopher Forbes as well. So, let's look at that. Good to have another, you know, uh, Western film. And then I was really happy to get this. Uh, it's Being Human Season 3. It's a three-disc set. This was uh, seen on BBC America. And I want to say later on they started airing it on Sci-Fi as well. Here in America, well, BBC America is on, you know, on an American TV too. But I just meant more of an American, you know, channel lineup kind of thing going on. Uh, feature uh, length is 460 minutes. In 2011, 16 by 9 stereo. Um, English for the deaf and hearing impaired. So. Gotta get your hands on the first two, though. I would recommend not going into this watching season three, or or you're gonna feel like you have to backstory it and watch what happened in season. Cause like these, I I feel like you have to watch these in order. Cause if you don't, first you're gonna be like kind of lost, but then you're gonna it's gonna spoil things that went on in season one and two. So if you can try and get, I would try to leave this. You know, maybe not watch it right off, but I mean that's up to you. But me, I would just try and get season one and two, and then go from there. But really happy to have that. And then I got a movie starring Hayden, Hayden Christensen and Nicolas Cage, Legend uh, Outcasts. Legends are born in battle. I believe the Blu-ray is circulating out there too as well. It says this is an E1. Uh, Entertainment one, uh, 2015. It is a Phase Four films. Uh, 
And it's got a lot of ink conjunctions. It's got Medial Biz, Telefilm Canada, Notorious Films. This is a, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a Canadian release film as well. Has a lot of Canadian ties on it and things. Like it even says Union Film Group. Uh, and then it ha like in the parenthesis it says Canada. So I, I wonder if a lot of this was probably shot in Canada. Uh, it's an entertainment one. Human Film Group. Telefilm Canada, like I said. Media Biz Capital. Seville Pictures. Arc Like Films International. Yeah, so it's kind of leaning that way. Being international, meaning abroad. Um, kind of has a Canadian feel to it a little bit to me. Not a not a, at all a big deal. Just pointing that out, because they do a pretty good job of disguising it, you know. Because like this looks kind of like American produced as well, but that's Outcast. I don't know if I said how long it was. Oh, uh, ninety eight eight minutes, and it's from uh, two thousand fifteen. Says the Phase Four film, uh, copyrighted. Uh, writing uh, and then I got a Stephen Baldwin Gabriel Byrne Chaz Palminteri Kevin Pollock Pete pa Possible Wait Kevin Spacey Susan Amos Benicio Del Toro and Jean 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 Carlo Esposito uh, Brian Singer film The Usual Suspects Five Criminals One Lineup uh, No Coincidence Right here, uh, I like the writing on the back. It's in this red, red on black. It's pretty cool. It has that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre three look to it a little bit. It's uh, rated R. A little hard to make out what year it is though. It says nineteen nineteen ninety five on this one, so I don't know if that's true. I wouldn't doubt it. I do remember this back in the nineties. You know, or somewhere early 2000s. So, I do remember it. See what I mean with the red writing? It's pretty cool. It's just hard, kind of hard if your lighting's not the greatest over here. Uh, it's a little hard to see. But uh, that's Usual Suspects, and it has a great cast. If you're able to get it, I'd grab it. And then next up, I got uh, Taryn Manning, Suzanne Douglas, Emma Miles and Deanne, Diane Guerrero. I don't think I've ever ever seen this at the Dollar Tree. Uh, it's called Happy Yummy Chicken. 82 minutes. It's a Gravitas Ventures. Uh, same 2016 on it. Widescreen present presentation. Uh, English 2.0 and closed captioning. It says a woman sits in a, chick, a restaurant eating chicken for two. Make a musical about the insane things we do for... And then it's got the sticker over it. I, I don't know if it's... Doesn't, it doesn't really say what it's really about. I don't know if it's semi-musical. I don't know. I just It just looked really like... Cool Duder says if it looks really strange, sometimes it's worth picking up because you might end up liking it. You know, more or less. I grabbed it. Never heard of it. Looks interesting. Let's look at the back. Better look at it. That's Happy Yummy Chicken. I couldn't resist with a name like that. Should be a commercial for uh, KFC or Popeyes or something. <laughs> uh, I'm going to open this too. Okay. I remembered I had to, we had to open this too, because we thought this was a runner. There's a Bigger, Fatter, uh, Liar. I guess this is a sequel to Big, Fat Liar. Uh, Ricky Garcia, Jodell Furlan, and Barry Bostwick from, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. You know him as Brad, uh. I think his name was Majors. I'm not sure. <laughs> I want to say that's what his last name was. Uh, Game On. And I think that's 
I want to say that might be Barry Bostwick in the background right there. Hard to tell with the makeup he has on. And this does come with a digital code as well. But I don't know if it's, you know, workable. It does say it ended on two, in 2017, which doesn't always mean it's dead. But uh comes with a pretty nice studio uh, look to the disc there. Looks very typical of a major studio, you know, no, no art, but kind of that, that, lobby right you know poster writing that they have like you know when you first go into the theater at the, above the top of the the mark i guess you call it the marquee for this uh particular cinema you're going to watch it in kind of has that writing like that i know at least that's what they used to do at our uh, theater they used to have these little lobby uh, uh like what the when the movie played the name of the movie and what times it played on these like little inserts that they'd put in these little uh, square uh, little I don't know what you want to call it but you you'd know what theater you went in and stuff and now now the way they have it is electronical and you know you have this like LED lights and I don't know it's just un unnecessary I miss the days of you know the way they do that before you go into a theater and then uh, lastly here for the DVDs, uh, this one's already spoken for, uh, but it's a WWE Wrestling, or WWE Presents Raw, the best of 2010. The experience, the greatest moments, the matches of, the two, of 2010. That's uh, a three disc set on this one. You can see, see how thick it is there. And I believe this is the only one I, I saw out of the two or three stores I went to. So somebody had to have picked this out right. And it is a, like a digi book in a sense because it does have the where it opens up and it's boom, boom, boom. And you got the three disc uh, over nine hours on this one. Uh, I'm not going to run down all the what, you know, what the, what's on it. It does say a Canadian home video with a rating of 14A on the back. So. I'm hoping it play. It does say region one, so it should be should play in the player. Okay, um, not gonna say it will, cause <laughs> when I do that, then I I jinx it, and then you know, who I'm giving it to might get it, and I'll be like, oh, I can't play it. But from what I see, you can play it. So, cause I do know there was. Um, I'd seen a cool Duder video where he had got was going through the stack of movies, and there was a region locked movie that he said you can't play that. It's region B, and if you do go to play, it's not going to play. So you'd have have to have an all region uh, Blu-ray or D, um, Blu-ray player for it, and I don't know, just kind of odd that would have ended up in a. Dollar Tree, you would have thought they would have, you know, maybe excluded that one from the load that they got in. But, you know, I mean, it's not like it's worthless. I mean, everybody can, I'm sure, get, you know, a Blu ray player that plays region free stuff, but they get kind of pricey and you got to get a, the right one. Or, like, I've gotten some in the past that last a year and then they don't read disc anymore or, or, uh, it was screwing up my stereo system. I, I don't know what what was going on, but you get some of those Blu-ray players that don't want to play stuff after a while with those region free. I've noticed that, but that that's a nice set there for uh, raw. And then finally, I got um, two Blu-rays here. First up, I got good old Freda. Behind a great band, there was a great woman, Pierre Joy, and Remarkable, says the New, York, the New Yorker. This is a Magnolia Pictures release, and it's rated PG, um, 5.1 on this one, 2013. Clock's in at 87 approximate minutes. Um, basically, it's the woman behind the Beatles uh, that changed the music industry forever, so... Since she was a shy liver, Liverpoolian, 
teenager where she was asked to work for a local band hoping to make it big. Though she had no concept of how far they would go, Freda had faith in the Beatles from the beginning, and the Beatles had faith in her. Many people came in and out of the band's circle as it grew to an international stardom, but Freda remained a staple because of her unfaltering loyalty and dedication. The Beatles' devoted secretary and friend, Freda, was there as history unfolded. She was, was witness to the evolution, advances, and setbacks. So it sounds like, well, Freda, Beatles might not have been. So that's pretty cool. Especially if you're a big Beatles fan. Tells the story of Freda, um, I don't know if you can read that. Yeah, Kelly. So. Without her drive and desire, it sounds like they might have, might have went folded, you know. It wouldn't have been a British uh, invasion kind of cr uh, craze going on without Freda here. It says it's cre incredibly fun and charming. The story of Freda Kelly will be one of the last true stories of the Beatles that you'll ever really hear. But pretty happy to have that. I watch it sometime soon because I don't really know a lot about the Beatles, but that sounds interesting. And then I got a Blu-ray digital copy here of the Emoji Movie. I did get this on Hamilton uh, book, but I noticed when I was looking at it, I'm pretty sure the Hamilton book one didn't have it. Uh, it includes a Hotel Transylvania short on it as well. This is right there. And if it did, I, I didn't see it on there. Uh, it's yeah, it says, uh, yeah, the Emoji movie's PG, and the little uh, uh, Hotel Transylvania short, I think, is called uh, Puppy, I think, and that's rated G. So, uh, you get a good double whammy of kids' animation here. I wouldn't really, per se, this is a straight-up kids' movie, though, because of the, you know, the poop, poop emoji and and different things, you know, I don't really recommend it for the really young, maybe, but it's not like raunchy sausage party bad, but but it is kind of up there. Oh, yeah, that has Hotel Transylvania short puppy, uh, good vibrations, special feature, express yourself, meet the cast, girls can code, jailbreak decoded, the untold story, how to uh, draw Gene and Poop. Poop. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of funny, but I did like the emoji movie. I know it gets a lot of it gets bashed, but I had fun with it. Thought it was different. wasn't your typical animated movie. It was you know solely about these emojis and stuff, but had a little bit of a quest to it as well. I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, take an adventure into the secret world inside your phone. Emoji movie. And it's from Sony Pictures as well. If I remember right, I had a lot of uh, well-known uh, voiceover actors in it. Yeah, T.J. Miller, James Corden, Anna Ferris, Maya Rudolph, Stephen Wright, Jennifer Coolidge, Jake T. Austin, Christina, I think it says Aguilera, Sophia Ver Vergara from uh, Modern Family, and Sir Patrick Stewart uh, played Jan uh, Captain Ju John Luke Picard. So, I mean, it has a lot of great voice voiceover actors, a lot of funny uh, actors, and talented cast of uh, voiceover actors. Couldn't go wrong for it. So, that concludes what I picked up for the DVD and Blu-ray. Like I said, the raw one was accounted for, so if there's any asking, it's already gone. Uh, I solely picked that up for, for Larry and Melissa because they had asked for it. Uh, some WWE stuff. So, thank you for watching this video, and I'm sorry it's been so many days, but like I said, we've been getting nailed with all kinds of storms, and I've been kind of roughing it a little, doing it by hand. I do have a snowblower, but I don't know. I don't like to waste gas if it's only a couple inches, and plus it's good exercise during the winter to keep active, but it's just when you keep getting it every day, it just gets to be like really stressful. You know, because you kind of feel like you're in a lockdown mode during a winter storm because it'll go from early in the day, right straight on through the day, 
might not be all day snow, but there might be a break or two in there, and then it comes back, and you have it for the rest of the night and into the next day, and it just gets really tough when you got to shoot video, and then you got to watch a baby, <laughs> and I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining, but it's just kind of, when do I get my videos in, because I want to stay active doing this, but I don't want to, you know, over overdo or I'm going to get run down and I won't be able to do them at all <laughs> and I'll get you know with COVID going around it's not a good idea to get run down and over overwork yourself because you you know you're probably prone to get get it that much faster you know because your your uh, immunities are working overtime and and uh that's my video for today and thank you for watching and uh, please share, like, and subscribe, and ding that bell for notifications when a new video drops on my channel. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. See you later. Bye.